cheese, the black hole picture, and its movie. They cannot be seen, yet they are not hiding. Nothing can escape them, yet they are not chasing anything. They are just so attractive. At first, Einstein didn't believe they could exist in a physical reality, but today we know he was wrong because they exist. We know it for sure. In 2020, Professor Roger Penrose shared the Nobel Prize for his famous discovery that their formation is a robust prediction of the general theory of relativity. I didn't even mention them, but you know what I'm talking about. Some scientists spent their lives studying these objects. Stephen Hawking was just one of the many. Ladies and gentlemen, fasten your seatbelts and follow me on this journey, because today I'm going to tell you the story of how we took a picture of a black hole. In 2019, the world saw for the first time ever the image of a black hole. A huge effort was made to bring this result home, and plenty of scientists from all over the world were involved in the project. I will tell you the story that lies behind this event. I will introduce some scientists to you that made this possible, and I am going to explain to you how it was done, how important it was for science, and why. But let's start with some information about black holes. Despite their name, black holes are anything but empty space. Rather, they are some great, giant amount of matter packed into a very small area. Think of a star 10 times more massive than the Sun squeezed into a sphere approximately the diameter of New York City. The idea of an object in space so massive and dense that not even light itself could escape. It has been around for centuries. Most famously, black holes were predicted by Einstein's theory of general relativity, which showed that when a massive star dies, it leaves behind a small, dense remnant core. If the core's mass is more than about three times the mass of the Sun, the equations show the force of gravity overwhelms all other forces and produces a black hole. We can say that one star's end is a black hole's beginning. But black holes are black. Do you have any idea how we can observe them? Scientists can't directly observe black holes with telescopes that detect X-rays or other forms of electromagnetic radiation because they trap electromagnetic radiation. The answer is we use indirect methods. We can infer the presence of black holes and study them by detecting their effect on other matter nearby. For example, if a star passes close to a black hole, a black hole can tear the star apart as it pulls it towards itself. As the attracted matter accelerates and heats up, it emits X-rays that radiate into space. Recent discoveries offer some tantalizing evidence that black holes have a dramatic influence on the neighborhoods around them, emitting powerful gamma-ray bursts and extraordinarily energetic radiation. This type of radiation occurs, for example, when mass is converted into energy during fission reactions that run nuclear reactors on Earth. But in the case of black holes, gamma radiation is even more energetic than that produced in nuclear reactors and is the product of very different processes. This powerful emission devours nearby stars and spurs the growth of new stars in some areas while stalling it in others. Although the basic formation process is understood, one mystery in the science of black holes was that they appeared to exist on two radically different size scales. On the one end, there are black holes that are remnants of massive stars we will refer to them as babies. On the other end of the size spectrum are the giants known as supermassive black holes, which are millions if not billions of times as massive as the Sun. We will call them giants. Astronomers found that supermassive black holes lie at the center of virtually all large galaxies, even our own Milky Way. Scientist Andrea Genz and Reinhard Genzel demonstrated such a link in our galaxy, and for that they shared the 2020 Nobel Prize in Physics with Roger Penrose. Historically, astronomers have long believed that only babies and giant black holes could exist, and that no mid-sized black holes exist. However, using the twin LIGO detectors located in Livingston, Louisiana and Hanford, Washington, and the Virgo detector located near Pisa, Italy, they have detected gravitational waves from the most massive binary black hole merger ever discovered. The two spinning black holes merged when the universe was only about 7 billion years old. 
which is roughly half its present age, and formed a larger black hole weighing a whopping 142 times the mass of the Sun, a so-called intermediate mass black hole, dubbed GW190521. The gravitational wave signal was detected on May 21, 2019. Now we are ready to dive into the most exciting part of the video. How did we take a picture of a black hole? Before finding out the answer to this question, be sure to like or dislike the video so that we can continue to improve and make these videos better for you, the viewer. Plus, be sure to subscribe to the channel, clicking the bell so that you don't miss any of our weekly videos. The answer is very simple. We let him say cheese. Okay, joking. As we said before, by its very nature, a black hole cannot be seen, but the hot disk of material that encircles it shines bright. Against a bright backdrop such as this disk, a black hole appears to cast a shadow. We took a picture of that shadow, so we are not facing a black hole, we are more likely to say that we are admiring his shadow. The stunning image shows the shadow of the supermassive black hole, it's a giant one in the center of Messier 87, M87, an elliptical galaxy some 55 million light years from Earth. This black hole is 6.5 billion times the mass of the Sun. On the JPL website, we can read about the technique that was used to take the picture. The ability to image an object so distant still eluded scientists. A team formed to take on the challenge, creating a network of telescopes known as the Event Horizon Telescope, or the EHT. They sent out to capture an image of a black hole by improving upon a technique that allows for the imaging of faraway objects, known as Very Long Baseline Interferometry, or VLBI. Telescopes of all types are used to see distant objects. The larger the diameter or aperture of the telescope, the greater its ability to gather more light, and the higher its resolution or ability to image fine details. To see details in objects that are far away and appear small and dim from Earth, we need to gather as much light as possible with very high resolution, so we need to use a telescope with a large aperture. That's why the VLBI technique was essential to capturing the black hole image. VLBI works by creating an array of smaller telescopes that can be synchronized to focus on the same object at the same time and act as a giant virtual telescope. In some cases, the smaller telescopes are also an array of multiple telescopes. This technique has been used to track spacecraft and to image distant cosmic radio sources such as quasars. Each telescope in the array focuses on the target, in this case the black hole, and collects data from its location on Earth providing a portion of the EHT's full view. The more telescopes in the array that are widely spaced, the better the image resolution. Just to give you some terms for comparison, their feat has been compared to resolving the shape of a donut on the surface of the Moon from Earth. This is an amazing accomplishment by the EHT team, said Paul Hertz, director of the Astrophysics Division at NASA headquarters in Washington. Years ago, we thought we would have to build a very large space telescope to image a black hole. By getting radio telescopes around the world to work in concert like one instrument, the EHT team achieved this decades ahead of time. This marked once again the importance of radio astronomy and international cooperation. We are able to improve our knowledge only if we work together as humanity, like there are no divisions. EHT observations could lead to images of strong activity effects that are expected near a black hole, and to the direct detection of dynamics near the black hole as matter orbits at near light speeds. This capability would open a new window on the study of general relativity in the strong field regime, accretion and outflow processes at the edge of a black hole, the existence of event horizons and fundamental black hole physics. The EHT leverages considerable global investment to create a fundamentally new instrument with angular resolving power that is the highest possible from the surface of the Earth. Over the coming years, the international EHT team will mount observing campaigns of increasing resolving power and sensitivity, aiming to bring black holes into focus. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I want to introduce you to the famous 29-year-old computer scientist 
that has earned plaudits worldwide for helping develop the algorithm that created the first ever image of a black hole. Katie Bauman led development of a computer program that made the breakthrough image possible. In an interview, she said, No telescope actually takes a picture. What happens is the light from the black hole travels 55 million light years, and then every dish collects a single stream of the light that it sees at the same time. That's recorded onto these hard drives. The hard drives are sent on airplanes to a central location, where they're computationally processed. But it's incomplete. The process of imaging is taking the incomplete information that we get from a couple of places on our virtual telescope and trying to fill in all the missing information to get the picture an actual Earth-sized telescope would have produced. That is a hard problem. There's an infinite number of possible images that could have been created from the sparse measurements that we took. The goal of imaging is to find the image that not only reconstructs and matches the data that we measured, but also is the one that is most likely. We have to impose some information about what the image should look like in order to recover that image. Some stuff that we impose is natural and easy. We know that light is positive. You can't have negative light. Other things we might impose would be how smooth the image is. You wouldn't expect an image of a black hole to look like the white noise you get when you pull a cable out of your television. You really don't want to accidentally tell our imaging algorithms that. For example, all what is likely is this ring shape, because then we just recover that ring back and we've learnt nothing. We work separately for a month, not talking to each other about anything. Then after one month, we all gather together in Cambridge, Massachusetts, and we put all the images up on a screen at one time. I think that was the most amazing moment, because even though each of the other images had different underlying assumptions and looked different, this ring appeared in all of the images. The ring was exactly the same size and it was brighter in the south. That was huge. Excitedly bracing herself for the groundbreaking moment, Dr. Bauman was pictured loading the image on her laptop, watching in disbelief as the first image I ever made of a black hole was in the process of being reconstructed, she wrote in the caption to the Facebook post. Katie Bauman's picture became a symbol of this discovery. All's well that ends well, but this story is a long-lasting one. Because the historic first image of a black hole unveiled last year has now been turned into a movie. There is a short sequence of frames that shows how the appearance of the black hole's surroundings changes over years as its gravity stirs the material around it into a constant maelstrom. To create them, the Event Horizon Telescope took old data on the black hole and combined these with a mathematical model based on the image released in 2019 to show how the surroundings have evolved over eight years. The work, which appeared on September 23rd in the Astrophysical Journal, offers a taste of what the team might be able to do in the near future as its techniques improve. In a few years, it could really start to look like a movie, said lead author Macy Wilgus, a radio astronomer at Harvard University in Cambridge, Massachusetts.